The Toronto Raptors continue to shock the NBA in many different ways, whether it be an outrageously good performance to take down one of the best in the league or an outrageously bad performance to lose to one of the worst in the league. And in this video, we want to discuss how and why the Toronto Raptors are the weirdest team in the NBA as a result. Let's get into it. Welcome everybody to MHR Sports, where we get the latest on the Toronto Raptors. We do Raptors game recaps, mock trade breakdowns, analysis, and so much more. So if you like the Toronto Raptors and you enjoy what you see from today's video, then make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for helping me hit 8,000 subscribers in this channel. We just hit it. We now start the road to 9,000. But guys, I am so grateful and so proud of what we've achieved on Amateur Sports. 8,000. That is a lot. We've also, as you can see, changed the background a little bit of popular demand. Bring the jerseys back. Bring all the decorations back. And uh, let me know if you guys like it more than the previous background. But let's get down to business today. We're talking about... The Raptors, obviously some great stuff happened for the channel, but for the Raptors losing to the Portland Trailblazers, 114-105. And the scoreline, I got to say, the scoreline makes this one look a lot better because the Raptors, I mean, if you weren't watching the game, the Raptors were down by 30 points, 30 points at halftime. They were down 64 to 34. Portland started hot. The Raptors started cold. And I mean, that carried for the entire half. Portland stayed hot. The Raptors stayed cold. We couldn't get any stops. We couldn't get our easy looks to drop. We couldn't shoot. And we were just utterly abysmal in the first half. The second half, well, things changed. I mean, why wouldn't they? You're down by 30. Things have to change or else just, just throw in the towel. So they came out hot. They ended up winning the second half by 21 points, but still losing the game by nine. Now, a lot of fans out there, Bit of a divide when it comes to this. A lot of fans out there look at this one like, okay, obviously bad first half, but a great second half. You know, we can take that as it's a little bit of a little bit of a win for this one, just to go in with some momentum into the next game. But I am not in that boat because there is a consistency with this Raptors team to do two very bad things. Number one is to start very poorly. It happened against Portland yesterday. It happened against Washington a few days ago. We ended up winning that game, which. You know, we came back, we ended up winning the game and also happened in many other games like the one against the Bucks. We started down 16 to two. Obviously, again, we ended up winning that game, but you can't go out and start games like this. If you have aspirations to go and make the playoffs, which I'm sure this Raptors team does, you cannot consistently go out and start games like that. Put yourself in a hole in very winnable games. The Raptors were eight and a half point favorites. That should have been a win against Portland yesterday. You know, I'm not trying to discredit Portland, but hey. They didn't have Dame, they didn't have Norm, they didn't have Larry Nance, they didn't have Cody Zeller. And the second toxic trait about this Raptors team is that we play down to our competition. Consequentially, we play up to our competition. When we play against good teams like Miami, like Dallas, like Milwaukee, like Phoenix, we play really well. But even when you play really well against the good teams of those four games that I listed where I believe we did play well in all four, we only won one of those games. So if you're playing well against the good teams, you know, it's great, but you need to carry over that momentum into the winnable game. So when you play well against Dallas, when you play well against Miami and you don't quite get the win, you got to keep that going. The Raptors did for the second and third quarter against the Wizards. It was enough to win them the game. And that should have carried over to this one against the Portland Trailblazers, but it did not. We did not find ways to get enough stops. We did not find ways to generate enough offense in the first half to make the second half even relevant and all. I get that we made it a four point game at one point. You know, that's great. I like that we had the fight. This team doesn't know when to quit. And you know, that's great. It could have gotten us to win maybe on another day in this one. But you can't look at this game like it was just a second half, especially when there is a little bit of a consistency of the Raptors playing down to competition, starting poorly. And this reminds me a lot of the game against the Detroit Pistons, where they really had their way with us because we started poorly and we just never really got it going in that game at all. At least we got it going at some point against the Blazers. But things like this just can't really happen. And the Raptors need to have different ways to hurt the opposition because when a zone defense gets thrown against us, 
like it was in this one, if we're not shooting the ball well, we need to find ways to break down the zone defense. It's not really going to come from your ISO scoring. It's got to come from moving the ball well, moving the ball quickly, having great cuts. And, you know, I just didn't think there was enough of that. We just settled for a lot of three-pointer sinks to the zone. I think a testament to how it went. Scotty Barnes shot three for 14 in the game. That's bad, obviously, but he shot three for 11 from three. Scotty Barnes took 11 three-pointers and didn't hit a single two-pointer in the entire game. That's kind of, kind of how the game went, if you want to sum it up pretty briefly there. And games like this are bound to happen with the Raptors. They are one of the most inefficient teams in the league and one of the most lowest scoring teams in the league as a result of really not having much scoring on the bench. But also, you know, the starters getting a ton of minutes leads to a little bit of less efficiency. But what they do is get a lot of extra possessions. They crash the offensive glass, generate a lot of second chance opportunities, and also, they force a ton of turnovers, also generating more offense. So the Raptors, even though they are bottom 10 in a lot of free throw attempts, free throws made, field goal percentage, all of that stuff, they're fifth in the league in field goal attempts. They get a lot of shots up. They're not very efficient, but because of the high volume of those shooting opportunities available to them, that's how they make differences in these games. They don't need to shoot as well as the other team. They just need to shoot more than the other team. And when you're shooting more, usually that is going to balance out into, you know, getting a lot of points. However, when your team is not shooting well and don't really have anything to go at other than just shooting a lot, if your team really isn't shooting well, which was the case definitively throughout the first half against the Portland Trailblazers, you are in big trouble. The Raptors need to find ways to stop this from happening. And we need to ask the question of how and why we seem to have these slow starts, how and why we seem to play down to the competition. It's awesome we play up to competition, but these are the gimmies. These are the ones, you know, you go to your calendar, the schedule, you circle this one as one that really needs to be a win. And unfortunately, it just wasn't the case for this one against the Blazers. I don't know if it's the mental fortitude of the team. I don't know if it's the team going out into these games just expecting to win. I don't know if it's specific players hoping somebody else bails them out. I just really don't understand what it is. A little bit of laziness because, you know, I want to believe this team is going out there with, with the mentality they need to go play their best game. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it's just coincidence. Maybe this team just doesn't really show up for some games. Maybe just have these cold stretches. But there is no definitive answer that I can give you or that anyone can really provide you as to why this team seems to falter in some of these games against poor opposition, especially recently. I mean, the start of the year, start of 2022, my goodness, did we explode out of the gate with that great win against the Knicks, the great win against the Spurs. But since then, I mean, we've had our fair share of struggles against lesser opposition. You know, we've been losing some games in the games that we win. We don't win them, you know, comfortably. We don't win them by you know good margins. Like even the Utah Jazz game that we do win by 14 in the end. We started down by a ton of points. And that was a Jazz team that really didn't have anybody available, any of their main rotation available. So that was another one that easily could have turned into a loss had it not been for a heroic second half performance. But, you know, NBA games, it's played over 48 minutes, but it can be lost in 12. It can be lost in 24. You need to play a consistent game throughout. You need to find a little bit more consistency. And even if you lose some quarters, sure, you can't let it get to that point down 33-15 after the first quarter, down 64-34 to after the second quarter. The organization needs to do a better job. And I think fans need to start kind of you know, not accepting that sort of mediocrity on the court. Obviously, this team really isn't built to be a champion, isn't built to be a contender this season. But, you know, there are certain things that you don't even expect from the worst teams in the NBA. You don't expect to be in that position for any team. So, you know, I'm not really going to consider the second half a bit of a moral victory. That was nice. And, you know, maybe that's a bit of momentum for a big game against the Hornets coming up on Tuesday, tomorrow. But, in my opinion, I'm looking at that first half like you lost that game in 24 minutes. You lost yourself the game because you didn't show up for 24 minutes. And that just can't really happen. I'm going to accept, you know, that loss against Dallas, that loss against Miami because you played well. The Raptors did play well throughout the game. They just, you know, they just couldn't quite get over the line against a good team where maybe a superstar like Luka Doncic takes over. But you can't just work hard in those games, get that moral victory and not take that moral victory and use it in your winnable games, your very winnable games. And you know, that's kind of what happened with the Portland Trailblazers. The Raptors are so weird. Beat Milwaukee, I think the best team in the East, or at least one of the best teams in the East. And you put on an outrageously good performance. And then you can also have in the space of like a little over a week, 
this one against the Blazers. A very weird dynamic with this team that just, again, plays down to the opponent, also plays up to the opponent. Can we balance it a little bit? I mean, obviously, I like playing up to the opponent because then you can go and, and win some of those games. You go steal some of those games. But you need to find a way to bring that level, bring that mentality down to games like against the Pistons, down to games against the Portland Trailblazers. You know, I'm talking trash with the Blazers here. But, I mean, with the injuries there, the catalog of injuries and in their position in Western Conference, I think it is justified. So things to figure out. I think maybe the mental approach should come into question. But truthfully, there isn't really a lot of ways to understand why and how these things happen. It's just up to the players to get out there on the court and execute and do their job. And I think it's down to coaching to figure out, okay, when a team throws a zone defense at us and we, we're not hitting our threes, how are we going to find a way to get buckets? How are we going to find a way to get points when we're not hitting those three-pointers to stretch out the zone? That's, I think, a discussion for another video. And that is something that the coaches do need to handle because I think the Hornets could even do the same thing to us on Tuesday. And that's a big game in the Eastern Conference playoff race. So hopefully we're back better than that. But this Raptors team is weird. Hope you guys understood kind of the explanation I give for that. You know, I'm not trying to be cranky here, but you know, I, I think I deserve to be after being down by 30 points in the first half. But that is it for me for today. Thanks so much for watching this. Please drop a like on the video if you did enjoy. Help us reach some new viewers. And if you're new and you did enjoy, we just hit 8,000 subscribers and I am so grateful, but we want to keep succeeding. We want to keep growing and grinding on this channel. So make sure you subscribe as well to help us on our road to 9,000 subscribers. Really appreciate appreciate the love and support I get on this channel. I could not have foreseen the way this channel has kind of grown into this and uh, I can't wait to see what we got in the future for the brand. See you again next time for another video.